Friday evening. What are you doing looking at me? Get out, go on a date, have a life. But if you care about politics, stay tuned. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Devil's Advocate. Later on in the program, for those of you who inspire to be rock stars, how the music scene in Denver is still alive and well. But first, I want to talk a little politics. Mario, Nicholas, thank you for coming and joining us with the Hagstaff Law Group. How's that? That's, that's nice. That's, that's exactly right, John. The, uh, I'm an attorney at the Hagstaff Law Group. And uh, just a couple of months ago, we actually won a important free speech case for the Senate Majority Fund and Carter Leadership Fund before the Carter Supreme Court. All right, let's get to that, because that was a, it's a pretty watershed case here in, in Colorado law, but let's, let's set this up. Back, what, was it 2000 or 2002, I forget, voters of Colorado passed something that the left put on the ballot, uh, campaign finance rules, which sounded really wonderful. I mean, got to get money out of politics. And in fact, it didn't get money out of politics, but it sure helped lawyers a whole lot because now lawyers on all sides are arguing what they can say, what they can't say. What, what did the law say back in, it was Amendment 27? Yes, um, um, Article 28 in the Constitution, and it, it was the campaign finance reform for Colorado, very much like McCain-Feingold on the federal side. In fact, that had passed the year before, they mirrored that here in Colorado. Uh, there, there are a whole host of things that it said, but importantly here, it's at contribution limits to political committees. Those are committees that go out and uh, collect money and then give some to candidates, but also spend, more importantly, on communications and public communications. So in other words, a, a committee that, that will help Caldera run for governor, and he might give Caldera for governor, that committee, some money, but also they're going to spend money on their own doing ancillary advertising that That's may right. or may not be coordinated with the Caldera for governor race. Uh, not coordinated. It cannot be coordinated. Otherwise, it's a contribution. So it's uncoordinated. It's just money they spend on their own. All right. So in other words, what campaign finance, in, in real general terms, campaign finance laws really took the campaign away from candidates and gave it to people who had the money. Would that be a, the right way to put it? Absolutely, without question. Campaign finance laws have done nothing but eviscerate candidates and parties. Um, and in fact, you hear these groups, 527 groups as well, uh, termed shadow groups, and it's because these laws drive money into the shadows. In fact, um, a, a friend of mine who works on the left side, Mark Gruskin, uh, has a great saying about this, that it's, uh, when it comes to campaign finance, there are no stop signs in money. There's only rights and lefts, uh, and that's about it. Uh, in fact, money will find a way to be involved in campaigns. So, in, so instead of Caldera for governor, the money comes to my campaign, I direct it, I say, here are the ads I want to do, here are the ads I don't want to do. Instead, I'm not allowed to get a whole lot of money. And so other groups that I'm not allowed to talk to are going and doing things on my behalf, even if they're actually counter to what I do. And we see this in politics all the time, that some group puts together a, an ad that they think is going to help their friend, but they can't coordinate with their friend, and it's wrong, or it's rude, or it's mean, or it comes out the wrong way, and it ends up hurting your ally, but the candidate can't even communicate with him. There's no, so he takes a fall for what somebody else does. That's right. Um, so I could go out and form a uh, committee uh, while you were running for governor that says, John Caldera's got a great beard. He should keep on fighting for great beards. And um, you have no say whatsoever right. about me running that ad. Um, I'll choose the beard instead of any other physical well, feature here. Well, you could say Caldera, who <laughs> believes in pornog free pornography for all, which I don't want it free, I just want it subsidized. And you could, you could go out and put out that ad, and it would cost me votes, but I'd have no way to, to do any check or balance or any, any of that. That's right. That's all exactly right. right. So while it feels good, Campaign finance laws have really taken the election away from candidates, away from the political party because they work with the candidates, and it goes into a, a multitude of these different groups. There's 527 groups, there's independent expenditure groups. What other groups are there? Uh, you hear about 501c4 groups, you hear about 50c6s, uh, uh, labor unions use, have their own groups as well, uh, small donor committees. In fact, one of the problems with campaign finance reform is that you have just this plethora of groups and no one has any idea half the time what they are, what they can do. You almost have to hire a lawyer to engage in free speech. So in other words, you got to be careful as a donor that you give your money to the right, right place, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. All right, let's bring it to your suit. The 
House and Senate Democrats and Republicans in the State House each have what are called victory funds. This, this, is, this is money they put together in one big pot and they use it for the targeted seats the next year. And so people give money to this fund. What is the fund? Is it a, is it a 527? Is it a... They're 527 fund. So they don't give to candidates directly. All they do is spend on public communications uh, that, that say something about candidates and uh, usually put them in a positive light or a negative light. Both Democrats and Republicans do this. Both the House and the Senate do this. All right, so both teams have these 527, which is named after a part of the IRS code, That's 527, right. and they're PACs, basically. They're groups, you, you give them money, and they will use that money on their own to, to advertise for or against a candidate. So both teams are doing this, right? That's exactly right, right. Um, to the tunes of hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. Really? Uh, for instance, give me an idea. So, do they actually get into the millions? Yes, absolutely, wow. absolutely. So you're young. I remember when, for ten grand, <laughs> you could you could go out and become a state senator. For those days are gone. All right, what was this lawsuit about? You, the Republicans were challenged in court by whom? Uh, a group called Colorado Ethics Watch. Um, I don't do them the service of calling them Ethics Watch because I don't think they have any. Uh, I just call them Sue. One of my clients came up with that. C E W spells Sue. That's what they do. Um, I, I continue that and basically they're a group that is formed to do nothing but sue conservative organizations and drag them through the mud and issue press releases and bring them to court and waste their resources. Uh, time, treasure, um, reputation, all of that go out the window as soon as they bring a lawsuit against you. Now I've, I've been on the receiving end of lawsuits uh, <laughs> for my political work and I've won each and every one. Uh, easily without doubt but it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of money and it zaps you of all your energy you're out there working for me it was on campaign issues I run issues put mm -hmm. on the ballot or I run against those issues and any little complaint and I, I, I spent a hundred thousand dollars like this which is money I could have been using into the campaign and it's taken out of that campaign and it, it's it's not for really winning a lawsuit it is a political tool to drain your opponent. I've been the victim of this. This organization, Ethics Watch, that's really their bread and butter. When you take a look at who they do complaints on, uh, they, I think they do a complaint every now and then on a Democrat to show that they're bipartisan, but overwhelmingly, it's 98% against Republicans. It's absolutely true. In fact, if you look at their uh, own website and you look at the numbers on their press releases they've put out, uh, first of all, it's overwhelmingly against Republicans or conservatives. And even when they have a Democrat on there, such as uh, Bill Ritter had a fine that was the largest in Carter history, and their uh, headline for that was uh, Sue, uh, Sue Opinion on Ritter Fine. Uh, if it's you, it's John Caldera violated campaign finance laws and screwed every Republican in Colorado. That would be the press release. Um, so, so I mean, you, I mean, you can tell it's, it's they're, they're one side. It's a, it's a partisan organization, even though it doesn't say it's a partisan organization. Who funds them? How do they get their money to do this? They're a, uh, they're a C3, so um, you do. Uh, it's your tax money and subsidies that go to that. Uh, but generally, they get donors who give money to them. Um, and give money anonymously. They don't have to be disclosed. Uh, and they get a tax break for it. And then they bring this lawsuit because they say they're doing the world some good. Uh, I, I disagree, and I think actually it's a very partisan attack what they're doing. In fact, this lawsuit's the perfect example. They brought the lawsuit against the Republican State House Fund and the Republican State Senate Fund. They didn't bring any lawsuit against the Democrats who did the exact same thing. In fact, wait, 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 slow down. I want, I want to make sure I got this one. So this organization sued your client, the Republican Senate Fund, and the House Republican Fund, but not the Democrats. What, are they all 527s? They're all 527s. So they're exactly the same thing. They, 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 more than that, they even did the exact same thing during the 2008 election cycle. You can go pull up the contribution expenditure reports, and you can find that they spent money on exactly the same types of mail. So in other words, Proof positive. This was oh. this was the tank. And when did this lawsuit get started? This is what blows my mind. 2008. Four years now, your clients have been fighting and, and paying your exorbitant uh, lawyerly wages in order to fight this. It and it, it zapped them of time. It zapped them of money. I, you probably won't tell me, but I, I I will say that this is well over a hundred grand because I know when you get into these things, it sure. it it just costs and costs, and the money keeps going. Four years later, it goes up to the Colorado Supreme Court, and what happened? 
uh, and we won a unanimous decision in our favor. In fact, not one step along the way did a single judge agree with Sue. Um, not at the trial court level, not at the Court of Appeals, not at the Supreme Court. Um, but that wasn't, I think, their point. Their point was to make the Republicans spend money. It was to make them allocate their, uh, their resources and the time uh, that they had to put into it and the just... Colorado I mean, Supreme Court is perhaps the most partisan state Supreme Court in, in the country. They will never take an opportunity not to bash Tabor. They, they're just wildly, wildly leftist. Less a little so now that Mary Malarkey's gone off, uh, off the bench, but even so, this was a unanimous decision in your favor for a lawsuit that was only put up against the Republicans and not the Democrats. I'll do you one better. Um, Chief Justice uh, Michael Bender wrote the opinion. Um, it who, was, is, who, who ain't no Republican slouch. Was, he, is, he is not. In fact, uh, Chief Justice Bender and I very rarely see eye to eye, but uh, in this particular occasion, I think he nailed it. Uh, he, he's protected the First Amendment, said express advocacy is limited to just the magic words, so vote for, vote against, defeat, uh, support, and said those words even have to be used in a manner to exhort a vote from the audience. Uh, I think he hit it right on the head. Let me go after this image of nasty Republicans who throw money at the system and create the elections. They buy the elections. I've heard this all my life. Those damn rich Republicans. There was a story at the Denver Post. Karen Crummy did this. It was just a couple weeks ago, and it blew my mind. It said on independent expenditures in the last election, 2010, Democrats outspent Republicans on these this type of contrib contribution, not two to one, not three to one, not four to one, not even five to one, but 150 to one. They spent two million, Republicans spent about 40,000, something like that. What does that tell you? Well, that's exactly right. I think Democrats know exactly how to game the system. They know how to spend more money on the outside. That's one of the reasons I think they like these laws, is they can do that. For instance, in Colorado, we have what are called the Gang of Four, um, some very wealthy donors, four Democrats, who see it as their uh, obligation, uh, their moral obligation, to give millions of dollars against Republicans through these outside groups, 501c4s, 501c3s, 527s. All of it legal. Let's, let's All of it legal. They Perfectly legal. They know exactly what they're doing. And in fact, in some cases, the laws were written to favor them. Small donor committees are committees that can give ten times as much to candidates, and those are basically written for unions because the unions can fund them to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because they can pull it out of their members' paychecks, and conservatives don't have an organization to, to do that. All right, out of time, but let me ask you, does this get better or worse as time goes by? Uh, you know, I think that it gets better as long as we keep winning victories for free speech, uh, although there are certainly lots of other people out there who want to bring new laws and will have the law of unintended consequences. So, Mario, thank you so much. We'll keep in touch. Stay tuned. Thank you, John.